Hi, I'm Jeff Warren from Public Lab, and uh, we're just going to go ahead and install MapKnitter on a clean development machine. Uh, I'm on the MapKnitter GitHub page, uh, which is a great place to start. And uh, below all the files, you'll see the README. The README has a prerequisite section and an installation section. Um, MapKnitter by default runs on MySQL, so I've already installed that along with a couple other things, but really this is a pretty blank virtual machine I'm, I'm doing this on, and uh, if you haven't installed anything on your laptop before uh, or on a VM before, then this will be a pretty end-to-end -end install uh, process. I'm going to copy-paste this whole section here. These are uh, a bunch of things. Some of them are for Ubuntu or Debian uh, systems. I'm doing this all on an Ubuntu 14.4 machine. Uh, and some of them are for depend other dependencies or related to image handling. Um, and I'm just going to paste that in and run it. Say yes. That's going to take a little while. Um, so uh, I'm going to scroll down a little bit. There's a second section. We're not going to install these. They're actually just for uh, exporting uh, of maps. And for basic development, that's not necessary. Um, so we can skip those. Um, and then uh, we'll get along to RVM. Um, I think uh, it's good to mention at the moment that uh, if you have questions about um, uh, development or installing or anything, go down to the bottom here and there's links to um, uh, the uh, public lab uh, discussion lists uh, where there's actually a developer discussion list where folks are will be uh, very happy to help you out. Um, and uh, uh, in general, um, you know, if you find bugs or uh, encounter issues, you can also open them on this GitHub page. So we're done here. Say clear. What, what's up next? Um, installing RVM. You can go to, RV, you can go to rvm.io. I happen to know also, though, that you can run this command, which will download uh, RVM and install it. But um, first, it, it, it barks an error back at us and says we have to get their key server. So we can do that. And then install it. It's installing, and there we go. Uh, so one thing about RVM is that uh, it is a whole environment, um, and it uses some uh, environment variables. So uh, I'm going to actually exit and reconnect. If you're doing this on your own machine, you can just close and reopen a new terminal window. Uh, and this will help RVM get set up properly. Um, one thing to note, this is also in the notes here, but on Ubuntu systems, you may have to um, uh, select run command as login shell in the terminal. Um, that can be a problem with RVM. Once you've done that, we can just install Ruby 2.1.2 with this command. It may take a little while to compile. Uh, it's asking for a password. All right. And um, <clears throat> there we go. Downloading, extracting, and compiling. I'm going to pause uh, the video here and skip ahead. Um, OK, um, so uh, basically a bunch of stuff happened, downloading, compiling, etc. And uh, the install of Ruby 2.1.2 is now complete. This can take differing amounts of time depending on how powerful your computer is. This is a pretty tiny VM, so I thought it's good to skip ahead. So uh, I'm also going to install um, NPM because we're going to need, that's the node package manager. We're going to need Bower, uh, and Bower is installed through NPM. So go ahead and do that. Say yes. That one should go pretty fast. And. OK. Once we have Bower, then um, actually, Bower, uh, as we install NPM, sorry, we don't yet have Bower. Uh, if you're on an Ubuntu system, some versions of it, um, there's a conflict between Node.js and Node, uh, an older package, Node, which is like a radio library. So it's um, important to install Node.js legacy, which will resolve that conflict and give you, it just symlinks it. So it just gives you a, a, a binary called Node instead of Node.js. So now that you've done that, we can run an npm. Uh, notice notice uh, dash g. So I'm doing a global installation of Bower. So 
was thinking about that. There we go. And now we're ready to actually install uh, MapMitter. Uh, so note that you can use Ruby 1.9.3, but we uh, prefer 2.1.x. Um, the, to get the code, you just need to run git clone and the, the GitHub uh, URL here. Um, and that'll put it into a folder called MapMitter. All right, and notice that RVM has actually read our gem file um, and chosen the correct Ruby, which happens to be the only one, 2.1.2. Uh, .2. And um, now uh, we can run bundle install, which will also read our gem file and will install the appropriate gems, um, which are like sort of plugins in, in uh, Rails. All right, that'll take a little while. It's gonna run through all these different gems, setting up our gem environment. Let's see what else we can do here. Um, oh, uh, and if you have an existing environment, you might want to run bundle update, bundle update to get the more recent versions of different gems. Um, all right. Um, just a few more gems to go. And I just paused it a couple times just to uh, let all these install without making everyone watch every single one, but we're still going here. And I think that's almost it. Um, there we go. Okay, so as you can see, there's nothing else to do for installing the gems. And we're going to go back and um, we need to uh, create a database.yml file. Luckily, we have um, examples uh, of each of these. Um, and so what we can do is copy them uh, and remove the dot example from the end. Um, and you'll get uh, a clean one. Open it in a text editor. And I happen to know. Uh, that on this system we have a database called MapMitter Development. Uh, username and password both MapMitter. It's not very good security, but it's easy for us to do here. So let's go ahead and save that. The next step is to do the same thing with this uh, config.yml file. So I'm making a copy of that without the dot example. And there's really not much to do here. Uh, it's only used for the Google Maps API key, which is um, not even completely required. Um, then we're gonna go ahead and do rake db setup. Uh, I'm actually gonna write bundle exec rake db setup. That'll actually make sure that we use the version of rake that we just installed in bundler. And that's just uh, assembling our um, want to be root at localhost. Sorry, I'm going to just double check our database.yml. It looks like we're okay here. Um, hmm. Well, we can do that. Um, I don't think you should have to, um, but in this system, uh, we'll go ahead and do that. Um, so you can see it set up the environment here. Um, and then, uh, and I haven't had to do that in the past. That's kind of odd. Uh, all right, so we'll go ahead and moving on, um, install our static assets with Bower install. 
Uh, sure. That goes pretty fast. There's no compiling to do. There we are. What's next? Oh, and then uh, passenger start, which again, I'm going to run as bundle exec so that we use the right version of passenger. It's downloading, compiling, and there you go. I guess it, it's, uh, it didn't have to compile because there's a, a binary available for our system. So. so there we go. And it seems to have booted up and rendered a page. Um, what we can do now is actually um, go to uh, our um, server um, and uh, let's see it is uh, 162.209.105.96 and it's running on port 3000 if uh, j just for the sake of argument if you uh, are running on your own machine you just have to go to localhost but I'm running it on a remote machine and here we are. That's MapNitter. And uh, you know, you can uh, log in. It'll take you through the public lab login. Yes, I do want to allow that. And now you can create a map. So that's about it. Um, uh, I could go through a few more steps, but that's basically how you install MapNitter. Uh, again, uh, the developers list is a great place to go with questions or if you have trouble. And uh, that pretty much wraps it up for installing MapMeter. Thank you very much.